All right, welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Ace Louie, and let's get started into this PvP build discussion. Uh, it's not really build, but it's very much so class identities. And with this class identity, we're going to be discussing a little bit about builds and everything that goes along with the class identities. When it comes down to your class identity in PvP, if you build your tune incorrectly, you know, you're, say, playing a Arcanus or you're playing a DK and you build it incorrectly, 100% your DK is not going to function well at all because you're going against the class identity. You're going against what's really allowed in your class. And today we're obviously going to be discussing about DKs and everything that they are capable of realistically doing. Now, I will say this, every class can quote-unquote do everything really don't get fooled for that because if you're trying to complete certain objectives in pvp or pve simply dks are not capable of doing it very much so every class has its limits some more than others and dks certainly do have their limits but they also have a lot of benefits so with that being said we're going to be discussing all the negatives and positives that they are when it comes down to playing a dk and making a dk for eso pvp Let's get started, guys. So quickly to go over the class passes for the DK, we're going to be skimming through all of this. They have combustion, increased damage for burning and poison status effects, restore magic and stamina when you ever you apply one of these status effects. When you do Ardent Flame, you snare the enemy by 30%, 30 when you do Ardent Flame ability. Searing Heat, whenever you use your Breath, Searing Strike, Dragonite standard abilities, it increased the damage of it and it increased the duration of it. Cool. World on Ruin, very useful. Increases all your flame and poison attacks by 5%. Very, very useful. Very, very useful. Passwords for Draconic Power. Increased the amount of damage you can block by 10%. Increases the amount of healing received while you have a Draconic ability active by 12%. Gives you health recovery. Useless. Scaled Armor. Gives you 1,000 the 1650 armor that's nice you'll take it lastly for earthen heart increase the duration of your earthen heart abilities by 20 percent when you cast an uh, ultimate ability restore 50 health 50 mag and 50 stamina per ultimate spent this is nice for getting some sustain back while also potentially doing a risky move with certain ultimates some ultimates grant you a damage shield when you use them, so it's not exactly extremely um, scary, but at the same time, it's nice getting some sustain back from ulting. Mountain's Blessing, this ability, whenever you activate an Earth and Heart ability, grants you Mind of Brutality, and then it also generates three ultimate while you're in combat. Nice. Helping Hands, whenever you cast effectively just Shattering Rocks or Igneous Weapons, these are the skills that you're going to be using the most that will actually pet up. Uh, actually activate healthy cannons, you're going to restore 1120 stamina. This effect simply does not occur for skills that call stamina, that is our earth and ability, and or a skill that is cheaper than the amount of stamina that you receive. So there are certain skills in the earth and heart uh, line that is cheaper than the thousand stamina. For instance, your ultimate is cheaper than this, and as well, Cinder Storm is typically cheaper. You can make Cinder Storm literally cost nothing if you wanted to. You can make it where it's a free skill and you just heal free. So yeah, typically it's igneous weapons and shattered rocks which you'll typically see activate that. So with that being said, based off of our passives that we just listed over very quickly, everything that is going on with the DKs is pure damage, survivability, and more damage. They do not have really anything in terms of assisting other people in surviving. And when you go over these skills, you can very much see that it's very much the case. Shifting standard, this is the ultimate. You drop this down, does some flame damage, lasts for 30 seconds, you can reactivate this ultimate if you wanted to, and it has a synergy. Very nice, high damage. The other morph of it, Champion of Might, it doesn't travel, but you can reactivate the skill and make it move, but it does 30% more damage, it increases your damage done, and it also uh, decreases the amount of damage you take. So, he buffs you for both damage and defenses. Molten Whip, you get stacks of this whenever you activate other hard playing abilities while in combat. gives you a damage done increase to your Molten Whip and gives you a weapon damage. You can stack it up three times. This is your burst skill typically, and it's also your spammable quote 
Venomous Claws, one of the strongest dots in the game, high poison damage, it procs a poison sass effect, and it deals more damage uh, every time it ticks. So it ticks every two seconds, and every two seconds it increases the damage by 12%. Engulfing Flames, this is a very strong skill. Whenever you activate the ability, it's going to make people take 6% more flame damage, depending on how much weapon spell damage that you currently have. As long as you get your weapon damage to base, 5k, you will always have a golden flame to the max, uh, maximum value. Even if you have basically no mag or stam, it will always get you there. The other morph of this is called Noxious Breath, very useful. It does poison damage and it applies a major breach. So if you're stam, you can run that. If you're mag, you can run uh, engulfing. It does flame damage, make it take more flame damage. Chance of Devastation, you activate this skill, you pull, well, you get pulled to the enemy. It does some flame damage, you get Major Berserk and you get Major Expedition. Major Berserk is very, very strong. That's 10% increase to your damage done. There is not a lot of things in this game that increases your damage done. And the DKs have a lot of things that increase their damage done. So it's very, very useful of a skill. Yeah, the morph is not worth talking about. Flames of Oblivion. This is your second or your only spam move. This typically is a skill that you will always have on your DK. This is a non-negotiable. All the other skills in some shape or form, I've seen people drop on builds. You do not drop flames of oblivion. This gives you your major prophecy, your major savagery when it's loaded on either bar, so it's a free skill in terms of crit chance. And then on top of that, when you activate the skill, you have 15 seconds of free fireballs being thrown out every 5 seconds. High flame damage, very useful, good spammable. Very useful whether you're proccing Molten Whip or you're just looking for that extra bit of damage to throw out with your bombing, whatever case it is. Very, very useful. Next, Draconic. Power for your active abilities. Heart and Armor. This grants you Major Resolve and it also gives you a damage shield based off your max health. It also does some flight damage. The other morph of it is Volatile Armor. When you activate that skill, very, very useful because if you're close enough to the enemy, it's going to apply a flame dot to the target making them take even more damage as you're fighting them for sending too close to you. It also does more damage, the armor does more damage overall, sending it back to the enemy. Now this is when we gotta talk about skills and combinations of skills because running hardened armor gives you a damage shield. This is basically a 6k damage shield more or less in PvP. If you run an ice staff inside tried focus, you can scroll down here, you get another 6k damage shield while you're in combat in PvP. Both of those damage shields combined together is a 12k. So all you gotta do is do a fully charged heavy attack with the ice staff active, hit harder in armor, and now you have a very strong damage shield. This is how DKS can stay alive very, very easily. And this is why I was saying earlier, certain skills and certain passives, you, you'll you sometimes will be brought into the build conversation and class conversations for their identities because it's so entwined with them. Any class can do the heavy attack with the eye staff, but it makes the most sense to do it on a tune that already has a decent damage shield, if not a very strong damage shield. This is very much the case for Arcanist and Sorcerers as well. If they wanted to, they could run an eye staff on their back bar, do a heavy attack, hit Hardened Ward if there was a a Sork or hit Impervious Wound Ward, and if there are Arcanists, and you just have you're just stacking damage shields on top of damage shields. It's very very useful. It is very strong. Moving forward though, burning talons. This is a very good immobilization and it's a very 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 good skill in terms of just applying another synergy and getting it out there. You can combo burning talons as a DK with shifting standards, so you can hit. Burning Talons and Shifting Standard, or hit Shifting Standards and Burning Talons. Have people activate your synergies for both of those skills and just burn through enemies very, very easily. It's very, very useful of a skill. Does high burst damage for flame and then also does high flame damage over time. Right now, it may not seem too powerful, but once we talk about other passives and what you're going to be doing as a DK, a lot of these tooltips, they get a lot higher and they do a lot more damage in the long run. Coagulating Blood, this is your burst deal. Basically one of the best burst heals in the game. It is second to is second or third in terms of best um, burst heal. The only reason why it's not any higher is simply due to the fact that it is only capable of healing yourself. You cannot heal other people, so the other burst heals are typically better. 
there's other morph of it called green striking blood if you're a stam dk you can make that setup work because you're stam and you're not trying to use as much magicka however it requires a very particular setup if you don't know what you're doing simply stick to coagulating blood mag or stam is better typically there's a few times where coagulating blood it is better to run green striking blood as a dk protective scale this just reflects uh, projectiles away from you it also gives you some damage mitigation as well be honest with you not very useful of a skill it's nice to have it uh, but typically you're not going to be putting that on just better skills to put on you, you're going to have somewhat limited bar space when you get into end game pvp so putting a skill in here it's not really needed deep breath one of another amazing high-end damage skill is very very strong when you hit this skill it's going to deal some damage and it's going to heal you for the damage caused. You can also interrupt enemies as well and stun them. And then on top of that, after 2.5 seconds of you hitting the skill, so once you just hit it once, it's going to do some damage and then afterwards it's going to do another burst damage. So if you know Deep Breath, not Deep Breath, if you know Deep Fissure and how that operates, this is just Deep Fissure, but arguably better. Because it doesn't require 10 seconds to get the high burst, it requires 2.5 seconds. All you gotta do is deal some damage next to people, boom, go and bomb people. Very, very useful. Using a lot of bombs, deep breath. Yeah, the morph as well is used a lot, draw essence. This is for stam tunes or for tunes that are uh, typically running out of mag too quickly. So if you're newer to PvP, you can run draw, uh, you can run draw essence. This gives you just magic back per person that you hit with the skill. But it does less damage in deep breath. Finally, going into the last skills, oh. I didn't say the ultimate as well. Ferocious Leap, you just leap at the target, does some flame damage. You get a really strong damage shield. I prefer using Ferocious Leap, it is the best ultimate you could run for a DK, uh, solo wise most of the time. Uh, the other one, Take Flight, is nice, not as strong. You always want to do Ferocious Leap because you're doing flame damage. Mag or Sam always have the flame damage. People take a lot more damage because they're Vampire Sage 3. Always do flame, you're always going to do more damage. On top of that, you get a damn show for doing it. It's just overall a better ultimate. Lastly, for the last skills, we got Corrosive Armor. Corrosive Armor is Corrosive Armor. You limit the amount of damage you take to only 3% of your max health. You deal some poison damage, and you get 100k pen when you activate the skill. Yes, I'm not joking, you just get 100k pen. Very, very simple. And you cannot generate ultimate while it's active. The other morph of it, Magma Shell, what that does is when you activate the ultimate, it's going to give you and your teammates 100%. Um, basically, whatever your health is, it gives you a damage shield for 100% of your health. In PvP, that means that you get a damage shield that's worth 50% of your health. It's nice. You can't really go wrong with it. Um, Stone Giant, this is a pretty trash skill in PvP, but I'll just say it anyway. You crush the ground beneath you, throw out some physical damage, throw out some little squares at people. Um, it applies stagger, which is very useful. Um, it's useful in PvE, it's not useful in PvP. It increases how much, people, how much damage people take by a number, not by a percentage. That's why it's never really used in PvP, because you'd rather just take that percentage. But uh, you could probably get away with doing something. The other morph is not worth talking about. It's a heal, and it's a trash heal. Uh, igneous weapons, your major brutality. Both versions of these skills is good if you want to run them. Igneous is better, in my opinion, because it lasts longer. You ain't got to worry about it. Obsidian Shield is honestly not really worth talking about. It's a damage shield skill, and it's pretty bad. Like, really bad. Shattering Rocks is a stun. This is your best stun that you could possibly run in most classes. It is an unblockable, undodgeable stun that does flame damage and heals you when the, enemy, when the stun ends. So if they break free, they take damage and you get healed. If they don't break free, you just keep wailing on them until they die and then you get healed. So it's useful, no matter what's going on. As well, the other morph of it is fossilized. You don't receive a heal, but they are now immobilized. So by the target being immobilized, they then have to roll dodge or activate a skill in order to get unmobilized and get snare immunity. Either way, useful. Send a storm. This is just a heal that you can just drop down on the ground. It's nice. Not much else to talk about. The other morph of it, it's not a heal, it's a damage. Again, not much else to really talk about. It also snares the enemy by 
if they step inside of it so that's cool and they and the cost of it occurs every one second so again the nicest thing about cinderstorm slash eruption is you can make it where it costs no magicka for you so you can just have free damage or free heals while you're fighting somebody and it's nice uh i've seen plenty of people make use of it it's gone out of fashion a little bit simply off the fact that bar space and also resolving vigor is better most of the time uh if you're not doing resolving vigor you could do echoing vigor it's just normally better to have vigor as a dk or even radiant regen than it is to potentially even run cinder storm solo it's good in duels but that's about it so with everything being said the most important thing to understand when it comes down to the dk's is this dk's are very very great at high burst damage they're very great at really any type of damage that you'll be looking for inside eso pvp if you want high burst dot pressure you can very much get access to that you want a single target we can get it for you you want aoe we can get it you don't want any dots that's fine we have high burst single target and AOE. when it comes down to it when it, any type of damage that is worth mentioning in pvp you have a lot of it now the reason why it's like that is for two passives one of them is a passive that is basically an unspoken rule that you have to be doing in pvp when you're trying to be any type of way serious with it you're trying to somewhat compete you must be a vampire and you must be stage three if you are not stage three vampire I want you to stop and think about all the times that you've been effectively two-shotted immediately without any warning or you're just taking so much more damage than everybody else around you it's probably because you're not a vampire and you're not stage three and i'm very serious on that because once you become a vampire and you get access to stage three the stage three passive undeath grants you 30 percent damage mitigation the lower your health is so if you have higher health like how i have in this clip where i have 36k health plus right that is very useful because having that much health means that i can sit around half my health and still actually be capable of reacting to the damage that's being thrown at me and i'll have a fairly good amount of damage mitigation on top of that so if you build your tomb where you already have a pretty good amount of damage mitigation and then on top of that you're getting more sources of damage mitigation you're going to be able to survive a lot better at lower health than most other people really can and 100% you will survive far better than somebody that didn't even have access to vamp stage 3 in the first place yes there is negatives as well because the whole point of you being stage 3 is the fact that in this particular scenario you have to deal with 13% increased flame damage taken so any flame damage that's being thrown at you you take 13% more this helps out the DKs because all they do in a lot of the abilities is flame damage now if you're thinking i'll just counteract this by not being stage three that simply means that any other damage that you take you will just take it and you have no source of mitigation and this includes the flame damage you can still use the flame damage mitigation that you're getting and it's not even flame damage mitigation it's just pure mitigation you can use that while fighting people that have higher damage with flames it's just extremely useful to the point where even when you're being countered you're still making use of the whole purpose of undeath so because of that you just abuse how everybody is set up you're going to take you're going to be doing 13 percent more damage by you doing that as well you also have a passive world and ruin that makes you deal five percent more damage for your flame abilities this is very useful because it does not specify only your class abilities no this is any type of flame that you do so if you run a set like Vicious Death and you get a kill with it, well, that's going to do 5% more damage. And then on top of that, people are vampires, so they take 30% more damage. So that Vicious Death proc is actually doing 20% more damage effectively immediately just for you being a DK. And then you have other passives as well, like Engulfing Flames. This is very useful because you're making people take, what, 6% more flame damage for being hit for it. So when you really get down to it, it is very, very easy for DKs to stack lots of damage done and just constantly pump out really simple and easy combos for burning through just about anybody that you want to. Very, very easy, and it's very, very, very powerful. 
If you don't know what you're doing, it is very easy to get fucked up quickly by a DK, good or bad, simply because of how their passives are. And if you're fighting somebody that's doing a lot of flame, who's going to have a rougher time anyway, and now you're fighting a DK that's doing a lot of flame damage. With that being said, it is not just limiting to their flame damage and what DKs are extremely good at when it comes to the vampires. If you fight a vamp, uh, a werewolf, for instance, you have a lot of poison damage. Werewolves take 25% more poison damage while they're in their beast form. With that being said, Venomous Claws is one of the strongest knots in the game before you make people take a quarter more damage. That's a newer set. And then it it's increases its damage you over the course of the 24 seconds that it's active. Defensive. You increase the damage Very of Venomous up. Claws up by 120% for the last tick while making enemies take 25% more damage simply because they are now a werewolf and they became a werewolf. So you counter so both curses that are incredibly be. powerful wow. in PvP for the ESO without really having to do too much. That is why DKs are so capable of doing lots of damage, and that is why they're very useful in groups and group play. Even solo, they're very useful. Now, on top of that, when we talk about groups, I did mention earlier you can be using synergies. When it comes down to the synergies, nearly every synergy is important that DKs can give out. Their ultimate for synergy uh, was Shifting Standard, very, very useful. That is very much used in a lot of bombing and a lot of group plates just burn through people. The Shackle synergy is insane. Combled with Burning Talent synergy, you can just drop Goofy. both of those and at no be? point do you not, like, you don't have to only run one DK in group, you can duplicate a DK build, run that in group, have them both drop shifting standard and burning talent, and proc both, and have them proc both those synergies at the same time, or at least one of those synergies, whether it's shifting standard or burning talent, and you're golden. And keep in mind, you can still be running a set like Vicious Death, and have it where you're just pumping out insane amount of AOE flame damage and if one person dies the whole group dies a hundred percent because of all the damage that's going out and the debuffs that's associated with these skills. So again some of the highest damage you will ever see in ESO can be done on the DK. They're honestly top two top three in terms of damage dealers in the game for ESO. I say right now with everything going on they are top two consistently for damage. There is one class that theoretically can outshine them in damage, but consistently they do not show up to the table when it matters the most because their healing is piss poor. With that being said, time to talk about the miners. Well, not the miners. Time to talk about the uh, <laughs> the negatives, things that they're really not good at. Everything that I just talked about in terms of damage, they have none of it in healing. They have well, you no just fucking black strong until, single target until you healer give, give to other want. players. You hope for these messages. They have no strong hots that they can give to other players. They have no strong AOE burst heal that they can't to give to other players. They have effectively nothing that they can give to other players. And when I mention healing, I am never mentioning solo heals initially or your own heals because it's more important for you to understand if your class is not capable of healing other people, that's far more important information to know than necessarily, oh, well, can I heal myself? Because I'll let you know right now with how ESO is right now, every class can heal themselves uh, at least 7 out of 10. It's at least a 7 out of 10 right now for heals. Every class has decent heals. Most class have really strong heals. So the fact that the DKs have no heals to give to other people <laughs> is very important because anytime that you could go into your class abilities and look for a heal, you're typically going to two skills. It is Magma Fist, which is a terrible heal because you gotta throw it at your enemy, you gotta throw it at your teammates. It costs a little bit too much mag and it's not a good heal. If the guild ever gets big enough, you can like always 4K separate consistently. Another guild on top or you can go to Cauterize, which is the other more of Flames of Oblivion. So that. you're losing out on damage for a heal that is, again, It makes it where there's multiple people inside the guild. So, so overall, 
you don't have heals that you can give to other people. Your best heal that you can possibly give to another person is Cinderstorm. And that's a hot, that's a very small circle that they have to stand inside of in order to receive the healing of. And it's a okay hot. It's a little bit weaker than uh, resolving bigger. That's how I place it. Overall, I'm still going on that. They're basically F tier in terms of group heals or any type of assistance with other people in the healing. Go they down. cannot heal you. Do not ever expect a DK to come out the woodworks and save you with a heal. That is not realistically happening. If it is ever going to happen, it is simply because day, you gotta keep this in mind. You can run skills outside your class that can do healing. However, if you really First stop and think almost. about that, you could have went on any other class, done that. That does not mean that that class is OP in healing or has amazing heals. It doesn't. It doesn't. Right. Sorks used to have really bad heals where it was just dark deal and it had nothing else. They didn't have Vibrant well. Shroud. You couldn't tell me, oh, Sorks had good heals because they can use Rally. Everybody can use Rally. No one ever says the Warden has good heals because they have Rally. No, they say they have good heals because of Polar Wind, because of Budding Seeds, because of Living Vines, because of Green Lotus Blossom, because of how their passives are set up. That is why they are good healers, not because they have Rally, which is not even related to the class. So keep that in mind when people are discussing heals and group play and situations like that. With that being said, solo heals, they have very strong solo heals. They have plenty of skills that are either going to be a hot that can heal themselves or they have burst that heals themselves or they have some type of when they deal damage they get heals shouting rocks is a great example of when you deal damage you get heals because you have to stun the target when they break free it does damage and it heals you deep breath when you activate the skill and you hit a target it's going to heal you for a hundred percent of the damage caused so if you hit 10 people with it and a total damage of it was say 15k in pvp hit that many people with it and did 15k in total you're going to be healed for roughly like 78k of that that's nice that's nice little healing that you can get on top of that you know um burning embers which is the other more for venomous claws i didn't really mention it because it's not that good of a skill that if you activate it it does heal you for like 12 percent of the i think it's actually like 50 percent of the damage caused so it's, it's decent that's also a heal that you could be running as well coagulating blood obviously a good heal green dragon blood is a burst steel that also turns into a hot gives you minor vitality increases all your healing that you're doing in general they're just very good at making sure that they're good and they're alive and healing right you have access to a damage shield in your class and like i said earlier you can combat that with the ice staff that's very useful it's intuitive into your class you don't have to force it but if you put it on it's so intuitive that it feels like it was very much thought of when they added in that passive or when they just changed things up it feels like it's supposed to go together so i'm adding it into this for the identity because other classes can 100% do it but it's not as intuitive it's not as beneficial to necessarily do it for the ice staff damage shield but the fact that you can stack two damage shields on top of that potentially do shouting rock and then leave the target you're getting heals from this you're getting heals from that and then on top of that you're getting another damage shield on top of all the damage shields that you just applied to the target it is very very hard to be killing dk's in certain scenarios they can very much make it where they're nearly unkillable to you in 1v1s. You have to really know what you're doing and you have to really time things out. Because again, they are very, very good at surviving. So they may not be able to heal other people, but they themselves are incredibly selfish and can make sure that they do not die. They can make sure that they are healed. They will make sure that you are taking as much damage from you and their teammates by pumping out as much flame and poison damage as humanly possible while at the same time having some of the roughest sustain that you'll probably see in most classes because most DKs have a sustain issue. It is very common for most DKs to run out of resources and it's simply off of how their passes work. Some people run too close into strictly what the passives are and that's how i sustain it uh they'll run the routes where you're just trying to abuse the battle roll passive it is not a terrible idea when you can get enough ultimate to 
hit it every seven to five seconds. But if you're not capable of actually spamming the ultimate and turning Ferocious Leap and other ultimates into a spammable, there is no reason to spam Battle Roar or try to spam your ultimates. It's just not beneficial enough. It is better to just run Wretched Vitality or set your tune up where you can sustain with your mag and stam recovery versus necessarily let me make sure that I'm just up using the ultimate because it's a useful ultimate but it does not give you enough magicka back and or stamina back that if you're in a situation where you're highly pressured like you have a lot of pressure on you you simply won't be able to get enough resources back no matter what you're doing you won't be able to get enough resources back the combustion passive is nice because you can get a thousand mag and stand back for just applying the burning or poison status effect that can be applied by you just light attacking so it doesn't really cost you mag or stam to potentially do that however it's still not enough to sustain you in the long fight it's useful it's nice keep it in mind try to proc it whenever you can but don't try to force it thinking that's going to save you and give you back all the mag and stamina that you ever need in the world it simply won't both of those passives are nice but it's better to play it's better to play with the battle roll passive but not try to abuse your ultimate because if you try to abuse your ultimate you're trying with too many what ifs what ifs what ifs and then when all those what ifs fail on you you'll lose a fight that you 100% should have won but your build didn't let you do it because you don't sustain you can't sustain it so keep that in mind but definitely it is useful as well to try to stack up some old gen so you can drop your ultimate a little bit more but don't make it where that's how you're sustaining make it where that's how you're just pumping out more damage that makes far more sense than trying to use one passive to sustain everything that you do in pvp it simply won't let you do it unfortunately it just won't let you do it because most of the skills that dk's have cost a lot if you don't have any cost reduction, you're not a Breton, things of that nature, the skills can get up easily to like 4.4, 4.5 with Vamp Stage 3. Your burst heal can cost that much. Some of your skills can be costing that much, like sh uh, Shattering Rocks easily is costing over 4,000 mag. You know, uh, Engulfing Flames, Deep Breath, Burning Talents, all these very useful skills I was talking about earlier, they cost 3,000 plus. They don't cost a flat 3,000. They're closer to like 3.4, 3.5 for most people. Mine's a 3.3 for those skills, right? That's pretty costly because if you're doing the Molten Whip, which most people do, they try to build up their stacks. So if you do one Engulfing Flames and then two Flames of Oblivion, my Flames of Oblivion cost 2k each. So 3.3 plus 4k, right? That's already 7,000 mag being spent. And then I hit Shredding Rocks on you. That's another 4k being put on you, so that's 11k mag. And then I hit you with a multi whip, which is going to cost you like 1k mag. So that's 12 to 13k, roughly, magicka being spent immediately. On top of then having to spend another 1,000 stam to activate multi whip, because it costs both mag and stam. So not only do you have to worry about your mag and your stam recovery, but then you have to worry about the fact that you just spent typically almost half your magicka just to do your combo. Yes, it did a lot of damage, but keep in mind, that's still a lot of mag to be using in a combo. So if that person survives, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to make sure that you can sustain that pressure on that target. Yes, you could have definitely burned through that target and killed him right then and there, but there's other times where that wouldn't have been enough. Yes, you can also combo in a, a Ferocious Leap or just any other ultimate on top of that after the stun. It's useful, it's nice. But at the same time, that still doesn't make up for all the mag that you just spent right there. Unless you have 500 ultimate. Or you have like 250 ultimate plus. Because realistically, you're not going to get enough mag back. You're not going to get enough stam. Well, you could get enough stam back. But you're certainly not getting enough mag back for doing what you just did. And that's just a mag version. If you're a stam, it's honestly worse. Because people still use Flame of Oblivion in their rotation. Like to hit it once or twice. And then you do Shredding Rocks. And then you use a Molten Whip that costs mag, and you're a stand tune that probably only has like 15, 16k mag. So you are very easily capable of running out of Magicka on your DK, and it's very, very common. You have to watch out for your mag, you have to watch out for your stand. Heavy attacking is highly suggestive when you're playing your DK. That is why, if you're going to be heavy attacking, 
a lot, you might as well run an ice staff. Get that damage shield so that you don't have to worry about healing as much. And then on top of that, you can do a fully charged heavy attack, hit harder in armor, and then do another heavy attack into skills like susceptibility, or if you're not worrying about outside class abilities, you can be running, shoot, uh, you can do another heavy attack into flames of oblivion, you have it on your back bar. Like, there's a couple options that you have where if you're trying to just pump out a little bit of damage or a little bit of this or, you know, you're trying to get yourself healed up, whatever the case is, you have the options to 100% do that as a DK and it's very intuitive to what you'll be doing. If you're already going to be completing this action, you might as well put on something that's going to be assisting you in doing that action and that's what that ice staff does. Resto Staffs is also very good on the DKs as well because you do a fully charged heavy attack, hit hard in ward or do um, resolving vigor, coagulating blood, whatever the case is, you're going to be healing a lot better. Hard in ward doesn't give you, uh, not hard in ward, hard in armor doesn't give you any health, but if you activate it, it gives you that damage shield. It's a little 6k at this point, you can't, you're not stacking it with anything else, but then hit that with a heal right afterwards, now you have to break through your shield to get to your health, and you're healing your health, making sure that it's topped up. So that just helps you out, so that you be able to sustain better, and you be able to survive better. So there's so many ways that you can end up sustaining yourself on the DK, it's not impossible, but typically you're going to be needing to run at least 1-2 to two mag reduction costs depending on your setup and or a recovery set. It is damn near necessary for all DK setups to be doing some type of sustain like that. Otherwise, unless you're very skilled, it's going to be hard to sustain your set. It's going to be very, very hard to do it. With that being said, uh, we're just going to rank where they stand. Because I've basically discussed everything that's important for the DKs. We're first going to be talking about damage. How I'm going to rate this is a 1 out of 10 scale, uh, scale. This is including both solo and group play. They are a 10 out of 10 in my opinion for damage. You're not going to be able to find much other damage that is capable of both solo and group play. The way that you're going to be able to find a DK. And the damage is pretty accessible as well. When it comes down to the heals, this is including killing other people. They are a strong 6.5 to 7. They're in that range. It really depends on how you're really feeling about it. I labeled them a 7 simply because they have so many ways to heal themselves solo and it's very useful because it can also stack some damage shields on top of that, making them pretty survivable and able to heal through most damage that's thrown their way. When it comes down to sustain, I'm putting them at a 5. You're not the worst sustained class ever. You, you're not running out of all your resources every time that you play but you're definitely always teetering on that it requires somebody that knows what they're doing at high levels to play certain setups that hit really hard and be able to sustain them so that's why i'm leaving them at a five and then finally survivability this is just overall including your sustain healing and then what the class gives you in terms of being able to survive i have to put it to an eight or a nine there are other classes that are far more survivable, but this class has plenty of passives just within their own class that gives you more or less everything that you're going to be needing in terms of survivability. You have block mitigation, you have healing received, you know, you have damage shields, you have strong burst heals, you got some hots, you got some, when you deal damage, you heal up for the damage that's done, things of that nature. It's pretty easy to overall survive on the DK. It's not the easiest, but honestly, you know, a 8.10, oh, 8 out of 10 is fair enough for a DK. I feel like that's appropriate. With that being said, that's it for the review. That's it for the class identity, guys. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.